The police line is moving. It looks like the police line is moving. We line, saw them coming line's in moving. five minutes ago. Okay, Paul. Go Let's, ahead, Evan. Can you hear it? Hi. So we're hearing loud bangs here. We don't know what they are. The line is moving. Uh, you can see the protesters right in front of me pushing the... So this is the most resistance we've seen from the protesters at the line. We're right here, as you can see. Hang on. Now we can smell... Guys, tear gas has been, or some gas, it's not tear gas, rubber bullets, it looks like something has been deployed. We can smell it and hear it. <coughs> there's a, there's an acrid smell. We're not sure what it is yet. I can't confirm. It's tear gas. That's and Canada it, for you. And um, someone, Paul, let me just... Things have dispersed here. Okay, the line moved. That was a very aggressive move on the line. Um, and they have now taken, the police are, have taken the area at the stage. That is the center parliament gates. And the police are still moving. Um, we're going to move with them. And the, the police line is still moving. Uh, there was two loud bangs. And then we smelt an uh, acrid smell. Again, I'm not going to confirm that it's tear gas. But you've got breaches going on in the red truck right here. The, Paul, can you take that? A tactical team is going inside the red truck uh, that has been at the base. Tactical teams inside that truck right now, um, as you can see. So they have breached those two trucks. Let's go move back. We are moving back here. Okay. The line is moving much quicker now. Tactical teams inside one truck, two truck. We're stopping here. There are people being pushed to the ground. And again, the we have moved to the line, behind the line here, and the police have stopped. And I want to give you a, a little update here. The protest has, the protest line has been reestablished. And now the front gates here, as we move right to the front of the Peace Tower, um, that's where we're lined up now. So the, the trucks and the main stage, I think Paul can show. I'm going to just give you an orientation here. That's the main stage and that's the Peace Tower, okay? Um, the main stage has now been taken by the police. That truck there has been breached and taken by police. And the police line is literally right at those trucks. Now, the protesters are resisting. So what happens is... There's a full push by police. The police push. The protesters are linking arms, and they resist back, and the police just move forward. Uh, there's what looks like you know, minor scuffles, and I could not get a vantage point if anyone was arrested. But I will tell you, that's the first time we've heard those two loud pops. Right. Uh, and we, we smelled something. Uh, Again, I can't confirm if it was tear gas or not, but we smelled something—a very acrid smell. No, Evan, and, I'm just uh, going to—I'm just going to come here. in here for a Go second. Uh, po police, Ottawa police, have tweeted out. This came out about, um, I believe, 14 minutes ago that one protester launched a gas canister. Um, and 13 seconds ago, yeah, just now, it says that protesters so continue to launch gas at police. This appears to be coming from protesters, according to okay. police. Okay. And one okay, arrest okay. has been made. Thank you. All right, we're moving. The line is moving quickly now. Again, uh, we have we have just passed the tear. Okay, let's go. They have they've they've deployed tear gas now, or something. There is some kind of smoke here. Okay, we are moving back. See no, we guys guys see. Okay, guys guys, guys we're CTV. Okay, okay. We're gonna okay. ask you to get we're to a safe back. place. We're moving back. We are, we are, we're moving back. No, no, guys, we can't get out that way. We, no, they will not let go that we have to move around. Okay, I'm going to bring in, I'm okay, going to bring in public safety analyst Chris guys, Lewis for a moment here. Um, Chris, from yeah, what I you're know, seeing, what do you way, believe we're seeing right now, this gas that's in the air? Well, there's something in the air, but I think... You know, I, I'm not seeing, at least I haven't seen from my angle, any kind of reaction to that from a physical perspective, because you get that stuff in your eyes right away. You're, you can't keep them open. 
uh, and some types of tear gas, there's different versions of it that really make you feel like you're choking to death. You're not, it won't kill you, but you'd certainly respond like you can't breathe at all. You're, it's uh, very difficult. So now it's a big open area. Uh, it would all disperse relatively quickly. So, and I don't know if I've seen any police officers with masks on, which is telling in itself. So it may just be kind of a smoke thing or some weak old type of tear gas. It's not well, as police, impactful as it might be. Uh, sorry to interrupt here, but police are tweeting that this is coming from protesters. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact cloud of gas that we just saw there, but that this is being launched at police by protesters. It is gas. So they haven't specified what kind, but police are saying that they will be responding um, to, with officer and public safety in mind. I want to get, okay. get Evan Fact, in here. Lois, oh, so, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Graham. Very quickly, Lois, let, let, uh, very quickly to Evan, to, to Evan too. The fact that officers are not yeah. wearing gas masks or any protective gear yeah. suggests where the smoke is coming from. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yeah, Evan, Graham, okay, I'm going to give you a sense. We've moved back off the line. Uh, again, I could not confirm what it was. We heard a series of loud pops and a lot of smoke. We do not see any police officers with gas masks on. What happened, uh, quite extraordinary, behind the line, one of the trucks that had been here for, I think, the entire time, 20, 23 days, has just literally moved around and turned and is driving down Wellington to try to exit the street. Uh, so one of the trucks is leaving. What's that? This and, and again, the protest still here, telling us, as always, to tell the truth. We're here on. We're doing our job, bud. We're right here. Oh, he's not leaving. He's going to block the road. Okay, so we'll see what happens. One of the trucks has turned here and is parked, and one of these guys is saying maybe he's blocking the road. We can't. We can't figure it out. And here's uh, this is Andrew. All right. So, so Andrew. Okay, hang on. Let me talk to Andrew for one second. So you're seeing this happening here. This is the police action behind. Are you concerned about what's about to happen? Absolutely, I'm concerned. There's women up on the front lines that are just there to be. Hey, hey, why don't you why don't you just why don't you just talk to me civilly? I'm here. And okay, so talk civilly. Talk civilly to me instead of just talking like that. I'm here doing my job. You're saying that that wasn't tear gas. Go up to the front lines. How can well, we, we, can't, we can't verify. I'm not, I can't verify things I don't. Well, if water and you can't breathe, maybe you'll know. All right. So you get a sense of what's going on at the front lines. But uh, so, you know, the protesters are still very passionate here. And, and, and we are behind the line now. Uh, you can see the tactical truck has moved up. And they have passed the main gates of Parliament Hill. They are moving now west. And I don't know where that truck, that truck uh, is still blocking the line. So there's a big area here now that's quite open. I don't know if Paul can show it to you. Um, this area now, after this truck, uh, there's going to be a, a large, wide open area, which is the west lawn of, of center block, it's called. And um, we'll see then the police. Uh, line will cover this and push back and then they're going to get to a lot a, a series a part of Wellington where there's a lot of trucks uh, and that truck that black truck in the back is actually leaving it's actually turning down it is not blocking Wellington it is now turned off the road and is gone it is uh, it is left so that protester was telling us that the truck was not leaving it was blocking the road. It's not. It's gone. It's literally just turned down the uh, O'Connor Street there. So, and we the just want to tell our viewers. Are moving up. Okay, Evan. We just want to tell our viewers that they're on the top left of their screen. We're seeing somebody being arrested, putting into a police vehicle. Earlier, another group of officers had carried someone out. It looks like that person was also being arrested. So it looks like a couple arrests have now been made as well. And Evan, I'll, I'm going to let you continue. So the, yeah, the line is moving quickly now. Um, the police have now moved um, quickly again. So uh, on the front lines, so the last number of days, there's been a loud pop again. The police are now breaching the back of one of the trucks, it looks like. Uh, I can see it. You see the tactical team climbing on. And they're opening the back of a truck after there was a loud pop. We can't confirm what it is. But you can see, there it is. They're opening the back of one of those trucks. Uh, and we're finding out what, 
So this is what the tactical teams have been doing. They, they take their equipment and they breach the doors and they're going into the back of a truck. As you can see there, the tactical teams are, are inside the back of that truck as the front line moves. And this has been exactly what they do. They, they take Evan, a truck, just... they smash the windows in the front of the cab. Yeah, we get that, bud. Okay, hey, hey, hey. Take it easy. All right, all right. Back it up. I'm doing my job. Okay. Okay. Listen. All right, well. Well, we're doing our job. You're posting the garbage. We're right here. All right, well, we're right here. Yeah, we, we are. Okay, good. So are we. So, I, and that's oh, I, right. Really? Right. Anyway, this is the sense of it. Well, we're right here, and we're showing here it. for three weeks. And I appreciate that no you're problem. here with us and actually on the ground. I appreciate that. That's a start. But when you show the, the clips, don't manipulate it. This is live. Content. You're on live television right now. Well, then okay. we can and, see exactly what's going on. Right. But can I just ask you an expect? I mean, and I understand outside of the mandate debate, what did you think was going to happen when trucks were parked for three weeks blocking streets? What did you think was I going to happen? Think any of us thought we were going to be here for three weeks. We were asking something we were very simple. A little earlier. We just but, but, the mandate's gone and we would have left peacefully on our own. Why but, is it taking so long to even get a... But did, does that how, I'm, in your mind, is that how democracy works? You come, you block streets, and if they don't do what you saw? Is this how democracy works? Well, I'm asking you. We, all we asked was for democracy when we got here. We wanted the right to choose. Our prime minister has done nothing but dismiss he us. Listen. He doesn't us, listen. He doesn't answer any questions. Name. But now, now, just again, I'm trying to ask. There was a demo, there was an election recently. There is a democratic process. Okay, what do you well, think that's about? That's a whole that? debate on its own on whether or not that's legit. That's another. Okay. Oh, so you don't believe democracies? The, the elections are legitimate? No, no, I don't. So. Okay. Well, I, just let me ask you about this situation. How, are you concerned about what's about to happen as you see this? This is a huge concern. This is this is, this is unnecessary. This should, unnecessary. This should concern everybody. everybody I, I wanted to be a world. police officer for years. I did. I tried so hard. Actually, I was almost made it to Ottawa, and I got screened out. But I'm so glad I did because, Thank God you did because he did I could not do this. I could not do this. this. And I know you got a heart inside that body of yours, and you see what's really going on here. Well, we're here. You know you do. Well, we're here, and thank I appreciate it. And thank you for talking to us and being on the ground, because what the media has been portraying thus far is not the it's truth. It's not the truth. We've well, been, we've they don't see all the good, like all the homeless people getting and, fed. Uh, they, but but can I ask you on that again? I, I, it's, I've been here every day talking to the I protesters. I've been here every day, too. I've That's right. Here. For all that, even though you're, you know, you're shoveling, a lot of people say, you know, because you're shoveling the walkway or feeding people, the city already does that. You can't take over streets and then say, don't move us because we're shoveling the walkways. What do you say to that? Oh, I think that we're, we should never have had to be here this long in the first place. But I do, I do notice any time on the media when they're talking to Ottawa citizens, it's people that have nothing good to say. And that's people who either haven't come up here or don't understand our cause. I've spoken personally to many Ottawa citizens who have said, you know what, I've been watching the news. I walked up here to see what's actually going on. And they're completely, it was it's love. changed their mind. Love, and it's, it's united guys. Canadians together. Can I just say, uh, I hope everyone's safe here. I appreciate you, you well. talking to me. And uh, I'm going to throw it back to the studio, but this gives us a sense of, of the people. This is literally, I just give you a sense, we are, what, 35 feet from the front line here, and the conversations continue. I'll throw Great. it back to you. Thanks so much, Evan. Okay, we're going to go over to Jeremy Sharon, who is about a block west of where you are. We'll go to him in a moment, but in the meantime, we'll just tell our viewers at home, on the left of your screen, you've been seeing police taking people away in their uh, cars, or at least putting them into their vehicles. There have been uh, several arrests that have occurred in the time that we were speaking. We were, we were watching Evan Solomon on the ground there. Uh, this police action operation in Ottawa, downtown Ottawa, it began around 9, just before 9.20. We saw police uh, moving in line formation down Wellington from the Chateau Laurier, uh, now past... Um, Elgin Streets towards Metcalf Street, so uh, right in front of Parliament Hill, that's where they're located right now. And uh, we just saw, saw one truck uh, move from that area down the street, so it's unclear whether or not he, that truck has left or whether or not it's joining another blockade somewhere else. Uh, that's the latest from what we've seen here so far. There were also uh, at least one, there was also at least one canister of gas that police say was deployed by protesters and police saying that they're going to do what they can to keep what they have to to keep
the public and police officers safe. Uh, we're also seeing another truck, it appears, moving down the road. Um, unclear where that truck is going, whether or not it's parking or whether it's trying to leave. Um, I did want to get thoughts from public safety analyst Chris Lewis on what we've seen so far. Chris, uh, what are your reactions? Well, it's very uh, expected, really, the way the crowd's reacting, the way the police are in turn reacting, uh, the attitude that some of the folks that Evan's been dealing with there, and he's handled that incredibly well. Um, but, you know, they just don't believe that the police are doing anything right. They don't believe the protesters are doing anything wrong. Uh, you know, they're looking at things that have benefited homeless people and whatnot that just have nothing to do with the strike or the protest or the mandate. It's just, uh, it's so confusing. You just see nothing but misinformation, um, and everybody's confused. Half of them don't know why they're there, uh, but they're all breaking the law, and they just don't understand that. So it's going to ramp up more and more until those people are all out of there. And uh, if it happens today, I'll be really happy and impressed. Uh, but they've got hours of tough work ahead of them. And we're just watching police here holding the line with batons in hand. Um, like we were saying, this has been moving quite rapidly, Chris, uh, throughout the morning. It's progressed very quickly. Uh, there were, of course, the tactical vehicles behind the line of police there. How do you think they're going to be used? What, what's their purpose? Well, they're, they're big, they're heavy, they're, arm they're armored. Uh, the glass won't break in the windows of protesters try and do that. Uh, so they can, they can make a real good barrier. Uh, they'd also have people in them. There'd be tactical officers in there, not officers with just helmets and sticks, but, you know, sharpshooters and uh, tactical officers that can uh, breach buildings and breach vehicles and do all that sort of work. They're generally contained within those trucks in part, but there'd be some of them at the very back of the police lines as well. So they're, they're right there if, the, if firearms are needed or some uh, higher level of uh, police response. It just it, it saddens me to watch this as a police officer. I, I am proud of what the police are doing, but the police shouldn't have to be doing this. And as Graham said at the beginning, the fact that that leadership failed uh, and they weren't prepared, they didn't stop it from taking root. They got entrenched. Uh, then there was lawlessness. Police weren't responding in part because they didn't have the resources, and in part again because of failures in terms of orders to officers what they can do and what they can't do. So many cases they had to watch stuff unfold because that was their instruction uh, which is all sad and then that emboldened this, emboldened this group they saw nothing from the police at all and they didn't care in fact they right up to the last minute yes they said oh no, they'll never do anything they haven't done anything for three weeks so that's demoralized police and it's emboldened protesters and here we are and Chris, you're mentioning pr resources, and we know that um, since the emergencies act came into place, uh, we've seen um, the OPP, RCMP, we've seen uh, police from different municipalities come in. Are you expecting a shift then in how Ottawa allocates its resources to this area, to our capital? Well, just to be clear, uh, you know, the Emergencies Act is under debate. Uh, there's pieces of it they may be good. The Emergencies Act had absolutely zero to do with the police resources coming in. The Mounties come into Ottawa to help, go into other cities to help all the time. It doesn't require any intervention by the, the federal government at all. It's a RCMP leadership decision, and the OPP go wherever they're told, and they don't care about the federal government's legislation that way. They just go because it's the right thing to do. So the whole resource issue uh, over the three weeks prior to the Emergency Act uh, really had nothing to do with the federal government whatsoever. It just they couldn't get the resources together. They were tied up in Ottawa, Windsor, uh, Coots, Alberta, and trying to deliver police service to frontline uh, communities all over Canada, and they just couldn't get there as quickly as they should. And that's where the resource issue is. Okay, I did want to bring in CTV's Jeremy Chiron, who is on the ground closer to... Uh, tell us where you are, because uh, when we were talking to Evan, he was at the police line, which was closer to Wellington and Metcalf. Are you closer to the police line now? Where are, where are you exactly? Yeah. So right now we're at Metcalf and Sparks. If you're looking at our live shot right now, the mounted unit is going down Spark Street as we speak. So that's the Metro Toronto mounted unit. We're seeing move in on Spark Street right now. We're just steps away from Metcalf and Wellington, where we just saw where Evan was speaking to you from, uh, where they cleared the crowd there. They've moved down. They've created a barrier here. Police have totally blocked off uh, Metcalf and the east entrance to Spark Street. So they've taken control here as well. You can see a group of protesters still here. Uh, 
And as we mentioned, you just saw that mounted unit uh, start to move uh, to the west towards Wellington. We've got officers here starting to move in as well. As you can see, if, if our cameraman Aaron just uh, turns to the right a little bit, other officers here with batons uh, ready uh, to, to move in, uh, presumably. Yeah, they're moving as we speak down Spark Street to the west. So uh, we continue to watch this. Uh, we also Ready saw, life. we also saw not long ago. We're gonna apologize. We've got someone right in our camera right now. Um, He's on harass. So we, we saw, we saw not long ago as well, um, like trucks filled with officers moving down Spark Street West. So presumably they're trying to come at this from more than one direction. Uh, but certainly a fluid movement here as police still continue to try and move in further here. They have control or have, have, have gone through the main intersection, though, of Metcalf and Wellington. That we know. And they've got control here on Spark Street at Metcalf as well. A, a large presence of police here. Right, and Jeremy, just to give our viewers at home an idea, Spark Street, that is a, a street south of Parliament, as you can see. Uh, it's a pedestrian that's street. Um, this is where there are a lot of little is, shops, that's right. restaurants, and people just walk down this area. So have trucks been placed there? Um, or are the police using this as a corridor for their operation today? Yeah, police are using this as a corridor right now. It is, as you mentioned, a pedestrian street. It's just uh, west of Wellington, or sorry, just south of Wellington. Uh, as you mentioned, a pedestrian street. There are no trucks on that street. Protesters have not parked vehicles there, but police are now using it to move along. We just moments ago walked up Spark Street. It was completely clear, uh, but now police have taken it over. We're seeing units move through there. It seems to be a corridor, a clear corridor for them to make their way west as they continue to move along and move crowds down Wellington. So police have, have taken control of that, as you mentioned, a pedestrian street on Wellington and a large crowd here we just saw as you saw um, more crews move in with with batons we saw the mounted unit uh, go through so police continuing to, to move in here and, and continue the operation please give us our space please I'm not, I'm just, all please. right um, I'm gonna bring in Graham Richardson as Jeremy positions himself again uh, amongst the protesters there on O'Connor Street he is south of Parliament Hill now um, Graham let's get your take on what we're seeing now more arrests have taken place we saw some Big rigs also moving. It's unclear whether or not they're repositioning to form another blockade or if they were, in fact, leaving. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts on what we're seeing here. Well, my thoughts initially are the patience of Evan and Jeremy is extraordinary. Yes. Uh, people taunting them and yelling mm -hmm. at them. Evan's trying to engage with protesters to ask them questions, and all they're doing is saying, um, at the beginning anyway, that he's fake news and all of that nonsense. What strikes me uh, about Evan's interview with those two protesters once they settled down and actually spoke to him, I've heard this before, where people have come up and saw and have seen this family atmosphere and this fun atmosphere and how they believe that we collectively are twisting what's happening there. You know, it's almost as if the swastika flag and the uh, Confederate flag uh, and the uh, anti-Semitic imagery didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Well, it did exist at the beginning, and two things can be true at the same time. Three things, four things, five things. Um, so, yes, if you're on the side of the protesters, this is a, has been a great celebration about their ability to, t to overtake the capital of a G8 nation. Um, and get their point across and control the city streets. That's one side of the story which we have fully covered. Uh, the other side of the story is the things that I've talked about, people in Centertown not being able to get groceries. That's true, too. What's interesting as well, Lois, uh, the police presence on Sparks down Metcalf, at Metcalf and Sparks, right where Jeremy just was, that's an expansion of where they were uh, previously. Um, so that says to me that they are moving geographically down Metcalf, and Metcalf I've seen uh, yesterday in particular is quite locked in still with several vehicles. That's where most of the big trucks still are. So my question is, how far are they moving west and how far are they moving down Metcalf, and where will that line stop? My understanding from senior sources is that they are going to keep going. They think they can break the back of this protest uh, today, and I've seen our pictures there. Uh, we're seeing someone struggling with something in their eyes. Last we've heard from police, mm -hmm. officially, they have not deployed any gas. They say the gas has come from protesters. I think it's important that the public knows that if police are deploying gas, they are mandated to protect their members. So when we are not seeing their members with protective gear, 
uh, they would never deploy gas without police having protected gear. And so uh, I, I just... I just put that out there. People can decide for themselves about what's going on. This is down Metcalf, Lois, that mm -hmm. shot there, where all those trucks are locked in. A lot of attention has been placed on Wellington and on Rideau and Sussex. This is the next hardened area of the capital as you're staring down that street there where those three trucks have been there since the beginning, saying they're not going anywhere. And I know that police are going in there, if not today, I think they probably will go in today, given the territory and the real estate uh, they have covered so far. And we're seeing, the, that's our Weston cam from the top of the Weston Hotel. And the fact that the police line has moved out of our view uh, illustrates how far west they've gone. They've gone past the stage now, they've taken over the trucks. So clearly what we're seeing is they decide to move the line and take vehicles and then keep going and then hold the line and then keep going. So it will be interesting to see where that stops. Are they going to go all the way to the Supreme Court and pass into uh, the area of trucks around the War Museum? Clearly they believe they have the manpower, the people power now to do that and they are outnumbering uh, protesters and they are scattering them. The protesters have a very different view of what's going on obviously as we've heard uh, before, but I am seeing the footprint of police in the capital significantly expanding this morning uh, in a way that's even further down the line than we saw yesterday at Rideau in Sussex. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do want to bring in Mark Mendelson, a former homicide detective, to get his thoughts. Good morning to you, Mark. Uh, thank you Good so much morning. for joining us today in our live coverage of what is happening, the police operation to move out this occupation that has uh, taken over Ottawa's downtown core. For the past four weekends, we've seen this action uh, really ramping up today. Uh, just uh, before 9.20 this morning, uh, we've seen the police line moving uh, down Wellington Street from about Chateau Laurier all the way past Parliament. It appears that many officers are now stationed around Metcalf and Spark Street there. Mark, what are your impressions of what you've seen this morning and, and police operate? Uh, I'm, Mark, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go to you in a moment, but we're right? first going to go to Evan that, Solomon. That is, is that right? Okay. Yeah, you tell me. Go, go ahead. Okay. Hi. Hey, take it easy, man. I'm doing my job. You don't have to call names. Okay, so... You're talking about doing your job. You've divided the okay, country in okay, two. Okay. You encourage this. You spread lies. Okay, hang on. So what's happened, what's happened is the line just moved. There was a loud pop. Some of the protesters have moved back, as you just saw, Graham, and uh, uh, back at the studio. The, the line moved about, what, 15 feet? Uh, there was a loud pop, and again, as Chris Lewis has been saying, uh, none of the officers are wearing any kind of gas mask, so I don't, we're not 100% sure where these loud pops are, and we're not, you know, so some of these, um, you know, we had seen smoke, we don't know where again. Sometimes there's a breaches of the trucks, although we've seen that before as well. So where we are again, just to give you an update, and uh, Paul, I don't know if you can... Uh, show this is the main line here now that literally and i'm going to walk you over just here that is the front gate of center block that is the main gate uh if you were or rather sorry that's not the main gate the main gate's just past that so it's one of the the main gates the front lawn of center block uh, as you can see the peace tower so they have moved the police line is moving right across uh, the front lawn of center block and again, for the protesters, for the police, and for the country, this is maybe one of the most symbolic areas in the country for parliamentary democracy. And, you know, when you talk to the protesters, they question how democracy is unfolding. When you talk to the police, they say they're enforcing the rules of democracy. And citizens are watching that debate play out. And, and you know, and I'm getting people, you know, talking... The, the Bill of Rights, the, the uh, we don't code we don't have a bill. Not, you're talking about you're talking about the Charter. The Charter of Rights, the the law is written in black and white. It's not schizophrenic. They cannot just apply how they choose to apply it. Can I just ask you? I don't. This is called the Emergencies Act, yeah. right? Yeah. It's in law. It's in effect right now. But this these laws were implemented for 9/11, Boston Marathon bombing, what happened in Oslo, in, in Norway when you had actually the emer. To be, I want to just tell you the fact. The Emergencies Act was not. 
even used in the 9/11. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm just. I'm. I'm using those as examples. Those. Those are times of emergency in those situations. That's where. That's why these laws were were created. Okay. And I, honestly, at the end of the day, listen. A nation that prefers disgrace to danger is prepared for a master and deserves one. The only thing that was preventing Canada from that disgrace was the police, and they chose not. Okay. So there's there's a view again. I said this to Lisa Laflamme last night. Um, long after this operation ends, and, and, and I don't want to pretend that this operation is close to ending. We're in an end phase, but there's a lot of ground to cover, and there's a lot of potential incidents. What, where the anger that you're seeing, the frustration, the different points, where does that go? What is the scar tissue left? Um, here's a guy, this is a guy. I love you. Have you gotten a, have you gotten a exclusive with Justin yet? And no, this is a guy. What's your name, bud? My name's Mike. How are you? Hey, Mike. You've been carrying around your uh, the prime minister there? Well, I had a little juice on him. I started hanging out with him when the election start, cycle started back in September. Uh, but in, in any event, uh, we brought him out last uh, two weekends ago and this weekend, and and uh, he wants to hear everybody's messages. So, so hey, you, you look like you're okay. You're worried about the situation when you see the, the police lines? I'm community. I'm right here. Okay. <laughs> I jest. No, I mean, uh, it is what it is. There's going to be a few agitators that get themselves in trouble, but everybody here is peaceful, and we'll all get herded down like cattle down O'Connor, and it'll be over. All right. Well, uh, are you concerned for your safety at all? Not at all. Should I be? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I'm standing beside, I'm standing beside celebrities. I'm okay, right? Yeah, we're journalists. And listen, I appreciate you uh, <laughs> talking to us. Thank no you. No problem. I love your show. Okay, thanks. Hey, but I would say, I would say this, though. And let me just pick up on the point. It would be wrong just to dismiss this as this is over and this anger is going to go away. Uh, what's going to happen with this? Where does this frustration go? I know uh, the Prime Minister at one point said this is all a fringe movement. And look, we know because of the arrests of some of the leaders of this protest, like Pat King, who uh, was arrested last night, uh, and others who have a long history of making uh, racial comments, uh, white supremacist comments, and others. You know, Pat King talking about the supremacy of the white Anglo-Saxon bloodline. But that does not capture what a lot of these people here are talking about. And where does that political energy go after whatever happens here happens is a question that the people who work in these buildings up here have to figure out. And long after the Emergencies Act, which is a temporary 30-day, if it's not revoked on the Monday vote, and they're voting on it on Monday and MPs can revoke it, but after that's done, I still think there's a large question. What happened here? What's the fallout? Not for today to figure out because we're in the middle of the operation. But when you talk to the people here, that is not going away despite what happens today. I'll throw it back to you. Thanks, Evan. And I do want to bring in Mark Mendelson, hom former homicide detective, uh, to pick up on what Evan's saying there because there is this strong, strong sentiment amongst those who have been part of this occupation, the protesters, uh, that there is injustice here or that something it needs to be done to fix what they see as an issue, as they see as a problem or a violation of their rights. Um, how do you think this is going to play out after the clearing of this area, after we've seen these blockades moved? Well, I think Evan makes some excellent points that, uh, that are going to have to be addressed uh, after these demonstrations are done. Uh, certainly in terms of the police, their concern right now is, is the safety of the officers, the safety of the demonstrators, and the safety of the people in Ottawa. And I think they've done a remarkable job this morning. It's no surprise that they have ramped up their enforcement um, and, 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 and in terms of how they're dealing with the demonstrators. It doesn't surprise me at all. It's interesting when, when you watch Evan uh, sort of talk to people on the street. Uh, we've gone so past QR codes and vaccine mandates, we're into... Uh, we're into Norway, and we're into uh, the legitimacy of, of the of the federal election. It's almost it's almost Trumpism, in what we're hearing from some of these people. And when you wonder whether the message has been lost, but Evan's also right that this is all boiling up, and it's going to flow over somewhere else. I think that the police want to get this done, uh, probably by today, by by day's end today. They've ramped up. Uh, the Toronto police horses we saw a few minutes ago are coming out again. Every horse is the equivalent of 30 officers. There's a strong uniform presence. Um, but we've seen, you know, we've seen from the demonstrators um, sort of the resolve that's left in them. 
Um, you know, and, and a lot of them have gone. But, you know, let's be clear. When you lock arms um, and, and you go you go face to face with the police who are going to move you, uh, is anybody surprised that someone's going to get arrested? I mean, they're they're asking to be arrested in many cases. But I mean, what do they really think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to be moved. If they if they comply, then they won't get arrested. If they if if they don't comply, then they might. And uh, you know, and 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 in terms of the laws, they've got the they've got the criminal code. They're not even worried about the emergency acts that are in place pro provincially and federally. The police have the criminal code to, you know, to 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 stand on right now, and that's what they're going to use. So I think they're going to try and get this done. They're going to try and get it done as quickly as possible. The weather is in their favor. There's certainly enough manpower. And I, you know, and I'm sure we've heard from a, a lot of different people saying uh, uh, about tear gas, things of that nature. Well, I can tell you, and I know that Chris Lewis can tell you as well, that if you're exposed to tear gas or pepper spray and you're not wearing a mask, the effects will last for hours. And, uh, you know, you, people will be dropping to their knees. They can't breathe and they can't see. We see no evidence of that, of that at all. We are seeing evidence of some kind of smoke bombs and other incendiary devices going off suggesting they're coming from the demonstrators. And that's why the police are being so careful when they're entering these vehicles, these trucks and these trailers, because they don't know what is in there. And it's, you know, it's about officer safety. It's about the safety of the public. Um, so, I mean, you're seeing the police hauling, hauling away prisoners one after the other. Now they may even break the record of yesterday of over a hundred. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but, you know, there has to be some control. There has to be a take back of the city. And Evan's absolutely right. What happens afterwards? And I think the police fear is, is this going to pop up somewhere else? Are they going to end up in Gatineau? Are they going to end up in Kingston or Montreal or back to Toronto? I mean, nobody knows at this point. So there's a lot of fluid movement taking place. But at the end of the day, this is going to be taken care of. And I think by the end of the day, uh, they'll have control of the downtown of, of Ottawa. Right. And Mark, police clarifying here on, uh, on their Twitter account, Ottawa police saying that they, um, that they did not use gas on protesters today. They haven't used gas on protesters today. They are saying that the, this gas, whatever is being used, is being launched by, po uh, by protesters. Let's go to Jeremy Chiron, who is on the ground right now for an update. Jeremy, what are you seeing? Hey, Lois. Yeah, we're, we're here just steps away. I'm going to get out of the way and we can have cameraman uh, Aaron here show you what we're seeing uh, at the intersection of Spark, uh, Spark Street and Metcalf. We've just uh, taken a few steps down here because we've been um, harassed and, and swarmed by protesters having a hard time just doing our job. So we're, we're a little bit away from the crowd right now, uh, but we want to give you an idea of what we're seeing. So police are holding the line here uh, at Sparks and, and, and Metcalf. They've made their way down Metcalf from the main intersection of Wellington and Metcalf, where we know uh, there has been major, major major attention throughout the protest. Now, I know Graham has been talking about the traffic here on Metcalf throughout the, the, the day today. So I'm going to get uh, cameraman Aaron to pan all the way around here to the left. And we're going to give you an idea of what Metcalf looks uh, further down, look what it looks like. So you can see there still a lot of big rig trucks still uh, lined all the way down Metcalf. Police have, have cleared uh, this area where we're standing. But as you get down there, uh, a few blocks down, you can still see several, several trucks. Uh, that's going to take some time for police. To, to clear people out there. You can see officers down there dealing with protesters as well. Uh, they're trying to, to limit the amount of people coming in. We have still been seeing, though, over the last minutes, uh, last half an hour or so, um, people still making their their way up, excuse me, uh, to join uh, this group here that is at Spark Street. Uh, so we'll get Karen and Aaron to turn turn back and, and face towards Spark Street here. Um, as we say, police just holding the line here. We haven't seen much action. Uh, we, we heard not long ago um, the Canadian anthem being being sang. Uh, people are, are still passionate here. They're still not letting up. They're, they're right there, right with the police that are holding the line, as I mentioned, uh, right at Sparks and Metcalf. We've heard, heard a few loud bangs of noise. Police appear to be using noise as a tactic. I can see an officer in the distance uh, kind of walking with, with something up in the air. We've seen at times them use what, what looks like a speaker that, that produces this loud noise uh, to get people to back off. So police using all kinds of tactics here. We saw not long ago, the last time we spoke, the mounted unit make its way down Spark Street. We saw uh, several tactical vehicles just shortly before that uh, filled with officers, uh, officers with batons, helmets ready to go uh, into the front lines, making their way down Spark Street. So police continue here to, to hold their position, uh, but groups still gathering here at Sparks and Metcalf. Jeremy, it's Graham. 
Um, can you, I want to ask you again about Metcalf. Is there any, when you swung yeah. the camera around, we could see a, a lot of trucks. It looks like it did yesterday. Any indication from where you're standing, has anybody moved the rigs out of Metcalf yet? Or are they staying put? And do you see police moving in there yet? Yeah, Graham, we'll, we'll, we'll get Aaron to turn around again and we'll show you Metcalf here. Uh, we have not seen any movement uh, of rigs on Metcalf. Uh, as as uh, you saw some live shots not long ago, we saw a few vehicles leave Wellington, big trucks. But here on Metcalf, since we have been here, I have not seen any movement of trucks. There's there's uh, trucks parked there, three wide, taking up the entire street. Looks like maybe three or four deep as well. So uh, at least six, probably more big rig trucks. And there are other vehicles behind them. Hard to tell exactly how many from here but I've seen no movement there yet Graham you can see officers around talking with protesters it appears like they're mostly just monitoring uh, groups of people trying to make sure they don't have uh, too many more coming up to join up here but we've not seen any movement of, of uh, police trying to get in and clear vehicles off of that area that section of Spark Street just yet right I want to bring okay. in Mark Mendelson I... for a moment here oh Graham do you have another question for Jeremy well no, no, I was just going to throw it back to you, Lois, and, and uh, I'll let you go with it, but it's just, uh, that's a particularly hardened group. I've been walking around downtown for several weeks now uh, by myself in many cases, and that group yesterday was not happy to see me. The first time I've seen that, they're quite angry, and I'm wondering how police are going to come at that group uh, because they have not uh, shrunk like the group at Wellington. And as we've been hearing from police sources, each area of the city is, is quite unique. And I'll, I'll let you take it away with Mark. Yeah, so Mark, I, I did want to touch upon what uh, Graham was saying there, because as we're seeing on our screen right now down Metcalf, I think that's around Albert or Slater Street, where the, Sorry? the group of trucks have been uh, parked no, he's, there. He's live with the we're wondering what oh, from the studio. Uh, is he's going like to happen to all these the protesters studio. once that line moves further south. Uh, Sorry, Mark, before we get to you, we are going to bring in Evan for a quick update. So the line is moving right now. As you can see, we're going to move back. We are now moving very steadily. As I told you, this is a wide area, um, and our, the police are moving quickly here. I'm going to show you here as the front line is moving through very quickly. This is one of the um, longer moves that the police have done. And one of the reasons it's a big move is that there's a wide open space as they move towards this tent. And now the line is stopped. And I think uh, if our, we can just move our camera there. Uh, they are, the line continues to move now uh, as the police are pushing the perimeter now right up towards the west block of parliament. Um, there is, um, I just saw some, again, some smoke, can't understand what it is, uh, no verification. The officers are pushing uh, much longer and much more continuously than before. Um, the protesters are moving back. Um, it is not a excessive resistance and the line is now just stopped. So uh, let me give you a sense of where we are, Paul. Um, this is Parliament Hill. I'm going to show you uh, the west, the west block, which is where uh, MPs currently are debating. This is for the next decade because of the renovation, and this is, this is exactly how. Uh, uh, okay, ha hang on a second. Hang on, hang on a second. So the line has moved right. The line has moved right up to the west block. And so what's happening here is that as the line... Yeah, so here's someone calling us the enemy of the people, but I, I get... And, you know, that's okay. You know, that's okay. That's okay. So, so the, the line is moving. The protesters are continuing, you know, calling the media the, the enemy of the people, and we're trying to tell the story here. Okay, we're going to try to tell the story. If you want to come on, you, you just walk over here, pal. Okay, but we're live right now. If you want to come on, pal, you're always invited. But so let me just give you a sense of where we are. This is the front line, and it's moving steadily toward down Wellington. Now, 
I just want to give people a sense. I know Jeremy Sharon has been saying that on the street just south of us, which is Spark Street, uh, there are also a series of officers moving down there. So we are coming up uh, in about uh, 200 feet, 250 feet uh, to O'Connor Street. Um, and there, there is, that will run north south. And here comes the line moving again. So they're moving quickly now. Let me just take a look. The police are moving ever closer towards O'Connor. The line is now moving. And we are now towards West Block. Uh, the line is now at the, uh, the line of West Block. So the entire uh, parliamentary center block has been uh, now taken over from the police. And the uh, line is moving very, very quickly through this area now. Um, as you can see, and some of the saying again, one of the protests saying it's moving because it's peaceful. So now they're we're funneling us down uh, O'Connor Street. Um, you cannot move down. I just want to say something. Wellington has now been totally taken. This is the moment. Now these are the last moments that the protesters will have any access to Wellington. The police are saying anyone who remains will be arrested. We're going to move back down here. Um, they're saying anybody here will be arrested. So this is the last 20 feet of Wellington that the protesters will uh, have access to. And the police now have totally control of the street and the parliamentary precinct now on Wellington. So after 23 days, we we have not seen any violence, sir. And this, uh, one of the protesters asking, has they seen? violence so this is let's just flip around here Paul because I want to get the shot of the West Block here as we can move back just so people get a sense that's West Block and that's Wellington there are still a lot of trucks that remain there but you can see the mounted uh, officers on horseback are down that street and it looks like all those vehicles now have been taken and it appears to me that Wellington has uh, completely now been taken by the officers and the operation is now squeezing from the east and the west and forcing the protest down south down Wellington so um, this has been 23 days in the making and symbolically um, as Graham Richardson reported earlier when the police said they quote want to break the back of the protest this is it listen to the sound as they chant shame on you shame on you shame on you Evan, it's Graham. Can you hear so me? So we are just moving down, O'Connor. Listen, I can hear you. They're chanting shame on you. I'll just give you some natural sound here. Shame on you! Shame on you! Okay, so we have just moved down. Uh, so and that, that completes the operation, as I can tell here on Wellington. Yeah, Graham. So I just, I want to be clear, I, I, I spent some time uh, down Wellington, past West Block, right underneath West Block. So are you saying police now have control of where all those trucks were and all those vehicles were uh, in front of West Block on Wellington? Yeah, I'm going to give people a perspective. We are now, what you're seeing in front of us as we get pushed down, that is West Block. Members of Parliament walk through that gate. To the west of it, to our what you would see to my left here, there are already mounted officers, okay? So it looks like the officers have now squeezed both sides. We're moving very quickly down the line here as the police are pushing down away from the West Block as we're moving with the line here. And it looks like Wellington and now the block south of it is going to be fully... Well, we're going to stop here. It's, the line is stopped. And it, and it looked like as the oh, protesters are. We've got an overhead picture now, Evan. And we can see the mounted unit. So from what Evan's reporting, this is significant. The police have retaken control of Parliament Hill. They have closed two lines, one from the Shadow Laurier area pushing that going west, and you can see from the overhead what Evan was referring here, the line of the mounted unit from Metro Toronto coming, um, coming east. 
So they've essentially established two lines and they now have pushed the protesters off Parliament Hill with fewer arrests, it looks like, than we saw yesterday. And Evan is now, it sounds like, down O'Connor, I believe, and that's where they're pushing them. And then we yeah, will see what right. happens at Sparks and Metcalf. Is that right, Evan? Yeah, you're right, Graham. Uh, as a chance of O Canada, which is, as you've mentioned, regularly break out, we are down O'Connor, and this is probably the biggest crowd you can see, and I know you have an aerial shot, because all the protesters who have been on Wellington, west, center, and east, have been funneled down here uh, to O'Connor Street. And O'Connor Street runs just right up to West Block, and the line has moved. This hill actually, this road runs downhill. Hang on. So you can see the line of police. And uh, Paul, I don't know if you can raise your camera up, but you can see the line of police lining the gates of West Block, and the chants of freedom from the protesters continue. But so this, this is this a is moment our, we're, we're getting another where, angle here, Evan. from a police operation point of view. Oh, we're we getting seeing... another angle here. This is a live shot, Evan. Sorry, Lois. I'll, I'll quickly, uh, we can see the mounted unit moving in. So where the mountain unit move, mounted unit is moving in, that is where Evan is just down that street. Mm -hmm. So significant here, the police have retaken the main street in front of Parliament Hill. Important, symbolic, and they have taken back control of Wellington Lois. Right, and this has really happened over the span of about two hours now, this police operation moving much faster than it was yesterday. I want to bring in Mark Mendelson, former homicide detective, uh, to comment on what you're seeing today because as Evan was reporting there, they've now cleared Wellington, the police of the protesters, and they've moved these protesters down what appears to be O'Connor Street and Metcalf Street. Uh, at the bottom of Metcalf, it appears that there is a blockade of trucks. Can we move I want to up ask a little? you, Mark, what you expect to see from this point forward from police. Well, I, I find it sad that uh, to hear the phrase from Graham, uh, and, he's, and he's right, that the phrase of the police have retaken Parliament Hill. I never mm -hmm. thought I would hear that in, in my lifetime. But they have, and what what's ha what's happening now is a very very distinct plan that's being that's being employed by by all the police services that are out there, including the horses. So they're moving the protesters, they're giving them an out. Yesterday it was you may be arrested, you might be arrested if you if you uh, engage with the police. The theme today is you will be arrested. And I a message that has to be sent out and is being sent out. The question is now, as they move these people along the road and take those streets over again, where are they going to force these people through? And let's really be clear, this is not kettling that's going on with the police that we had in G20, which was highly criticized. Mm -hmm. This is not kettling. By moving these people, you're giving them an opportunity to leave on their own accord. And those that choose not to will get arrested at, at, a, at a point today. But the question is, where are they going to where are they going to force them through? Uh, are they going to get them right out of the red zone? And if so, where they where are they going to congregate next? That's a concern for the police. Their intelligence units will be looking at that, monitoring social media. But I mean, the messaging from the from the protesters is so varied now um, between mainstream media and, and and the election being a fraud that there, there doesn't appear to be any organization other than locking arms and standing straight. So the police are going to work on this now. They're going to take it street by street. They're going to tow vehicle by vehicle until such time as they have complete control of that red zone. And, you know, we're going to have to worry about pop-ups later on. And hopefully some of these people say, okay, our message has been sent and we're out of here. I don't need to be arrested. I don't need to be before the courts. I don't need to worry about getting into the United States. You know, they should be leaving on their own. And it's going to take a couple of hours, but I think the police are working in an admirable way. They're highly trained. They're being very professional. They are not engaging in any way um, with the protesters other than getting them to move. And so far, so good, and we hope that stays uh, this uh, this way for the rest of the day. Right, and Mark, if some of these protesters continue to stand their ground when they are facing arrest, if they are arrested, what are the consequences they could be possibly facing here? 
Well, what happens is they will they will be they will be physically detained by that front line that 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 Evan has uh, been articulating. He's also mentioned there's a back line behind them. So when somebody's arrested, they're taken from the front line and they're pulled to the back. And the people and the officers in the back line will be the ones that will actually take control of, of, of the prisoner. They will go off to a police station or another designated area that they figured out. They'll be processed, photographed, fingerprinted. And depending on their history, their criminal record and what they're being charged with, they could be released by the officer in charge of the station with bail conditions, very, very strict bail conditions. I can guarantee you the first one will be that you, you can't be within a thousand meters of uh, of Parliament Hill, or if you're not from Ottawa, that you can't be within the region of Ottawa. There's all kinds of different conditions. Keep the peace and be of good behavior. It's a widespread uh, release condition, but it covers something like a protest, social media, all those things. They could be released under those conditions. If there's a concern about the continuation of an offense, they will be kept in custody and they'll appear before a justice of the peace either today or maybe tomorrow. I'm sure that. Uh, the, the, that the attorney general and the crown's office and the police have all made sure that there are sufficient Hi, justices of the peace available to, for these hearings because it is the long weekend and these people are going to be processed that way and released so there are serious consequences whether it's mischief or obstruct police or assault police uh, there are serious criminal consequences to all of them and, and i know mischief sounds you know like a minor charge but it's not that you know it, it does carry a jail sentence i doubt anybody will be going to jail for this but it's still it's still a criminal offense and it's a criminal conviction and it it remains with you for your for your life. Um, so they, you know these are consequences that they need to think about. But the arresting and the processing and the releasing and justices of the peace have all been sorted out already. They are waiting. Crown attorneys have been on board with this and prepared ever since they decided that this operation was going to take place. And now we're going to see how that works. And hopefully most people decide to leave on their own accord.